Welcome to the Lifestyle Chase. This podcast features high performers who have found a way to live their best life while balancing their health, wellness, friends, and family. Proudly hosted by me, Chris Little. Without further ado, let's get started. So welcome to episode 61 of the Lifestyle Chase. I'm joined by Danny Parks. How are you doing today? Great. How are you? Not too bad. It's like... Both of our days have completely shifted in different ways, and it opened up our schedule to do a podcast today, so I'm pretty pumped that I've been trying to get you on for, like, the last 40 episodes. I know, (laughs) it's been a good year, and yeah, today worked out, and I saw your message, I woke up at 4 a.m., I'm like, I actually can today. That's awesome. Yeah. So, tell me about how your day has unfolded today in comparison to, say, like, the busiest day that you had so far in 2019. Well, you know, some of my days are crazy. I wake up and I teach at six and then rush the kids to school, go off, teach, teach, teach. Some days I'll teach seven times. And then today just kind of cleared up. I taught at 6 a.m. and then taught at 9.15. And then now I don't teach till 6.30, so I have a nice day. And it's actually sunny out, so this is really a nice change. Yeah. We were planning on maybe hitting the pool, but my eight-year-old broke her arm, so we're not doing the pool. So it's almost kind of forcing us to just chill a little bit more. Usually I'm go, go, go. Yeah. But there's just a lot of things that have happened this summer that's causing a lot of chill. But I think different. that's important. Yeah. Like some people forget or they lose the idea of how to like calm down and just like enjoy the little things. Especially in that like contractor hustle because like yeah. all these yoga studios that you're at, you're a contractor, right? Yeah. So you have to apply yourself and put yourself out there and go to different studios and it's up to them. You don't, I'll try to make my schedule and here's when I'm available and it works and then all of a sudden it doesn't. Like it's not working for them or they switch the schedule and you don't really have a say at all. So totally. it's, it's tough, yeah. So how, how long have you been like a yoga instructor? How long has that been like your main thing that you've done? Well, I have been a stay at home mom now for 14 years. And then five years ago, I started teaching yoga for kids because I could do that with my kids. I could take them while I was teaching. They came, they participated in the class or I was teaching a lot through schools. So I would drag my littlest with me. He would do it. Um, or I'd have a little guy in a car seat kind of thing. Um, and then it switched to when they were sleeping. So I'd teach at 6 a.m. or 8 p.m. So I'd put them to bed, go teach. Um, and then just in the last two years, things have kind of shifted and I've been hustling, like teaching a lot more. Sometimes I was teaching 27 classes a week, which if you add in driving time and class planning time and planning the music and all that, that's a lot of hours of working plus being full-time mom. It's, yeah, so the last few months I've been trying to dial back and slow down and take a couple things off my plate. Well, it's nice to be able to recognize that you need to do that and to be able to make it work that you can do that. Yeah, make it work. I do really like teaching in the schools. That's something I'd like to add more back in. I love being around kids and I think yoga and mindfulness for children is like, that's the reason why I started teaching was to bring that in to build self-esteem for kids. Well, it's important like in terms of what yoga does for kids, what do you think are the top three things that it combats against? Like basically the world is changing. There's a lot of technology out there. There's a lot of things that uh, we're taking for granted and a lot of things that make yoga almost like a necessity or just that whole mindfulness for for kids. So what are the things that uh, people are battling for for kids or kids themselves i find that there's so much like on any given day things are going to change whether it's you look outside it's going to be the weather is going to change on you our bodies are changing especially as teenagers their bodies change you know maybe your family life changes um your your friends change all these outside sources change but it's on the inside that doesn't change like who you are who your root is and i find that that is what yoga is yoga isn't just my handstands it's not what it's about it's about looking on the inside, being mindful, growing who you are, that part's not going to change, whether things are easy or things are difficult. So teaching kids, teaching adults, these skills that they didn't learn as a kid, if you've learned it as a child, you can carry it with you and deal with problems later on or deal with what the world's throwing at you. When you're in your 30s and you're trying to figure things out, 
you can go and have a mindfulness session. So you can either do yoga, you can do your home meditation or go to a meditation studio and practice. And that's where we learn those skills. For me, it's the kids. I want them to learn to pause and breathe and stop and look inside for the answers. I, like I take an example would be kids at recess. The bell rings, it's recess, they go out there, they scream, they have a great time, you're free. And we don't do that as grownups anymore. Like when was the last time you actually ran outside, shouted my swing and just like went for it. We don't necessarily do that. That's why I like to teach like a fun class sometimes where we play loud music, we have a great time, we try things we wouldn't try. Just let go, let your mind just be free. Then you're free, you come back inside after recess and then you're buzzing with all this energy and you're expected to sit down and just bam right into it, do some hard math and your brain is buzzing, your body's vibrating. I think it would be important for kids to learn two minutes of mindfulness, to sit down at their desk, take a deep breath in, deep breath out, a couple of those breaths that resets your vibrations, that resets your energy so that you can use the energy that you took from outside, that you built in your body and then you use it properly instead of just like, I can't sit, I can't sit still, I'm vibrating. Reset that energy, reset your focus. That to me is why, yeah, yoga's about with kids, yoga and mindfulness, yeah. How about the effect of social media? Because I'm finding that it's kind of like eating people up. Oh, it, it, you look at it, you can sit there and you, it's a comparison thing. You look and you know, I'm don't, I need this new outfit. I'm not good enough. Um, and I'll get into that phase where you look at it for hours and then you get into a loop and then you're looking at something else or I'm not doing enough or now I need to start doing this blog or something. And when you're looking at it for teenagers, they're constantly comparing what they should do, what I should look like. And then there shouldn't be any shoulds. It should be a, just be you. Yeah. And so, I think my, like I find honestly that social media can be an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Amazing connections, amazing friends I've made. People I haven't even met yet. And then when you do meet them and then they tell you, hey, you made a difference in my day. That kind of stuff is the things that I live for. So there are such great things with social media, but there's those catches that you just get swallowed up in and it's hard for teenagers. And so if they can take that extra little bit, a couple minutes, to sit down and be mindful. Maybe do five minutes of meditation or yoga practice before they go on Instagram or after they go on Instagram, just to, again, reset those energy vibrations, reset your mindset instead of thinking, oh, I'm not good enough. And then you put the phone down and you're walking away. Put the phone down, roll out a mat, sit on a cushion and reset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I find it becomes the framework for not just kids, but adults and everything. Like yeah. They, they're structuring everything in their day based on what they're consuming externally instead of addressing what's internal. Absolutely. So let's think about um, core values. If you could identify, let's say, five core values, what are yours? Oh, that's a good question. My core values are treating others with respect. Um... But with that, treat yourself with respect. We start with ourselves. Respect um, and kindness. Oh, five of them. I find that that kind of stems from everything. It's just, and I try to raise my kids with those same morals and values to honestly just be kind. Look at how your actions will affect others. Um, and and you, you smile at somebody and see how that affects them, right? So it's looking inside to see how you can be kind to come up with a couple others core, core values. Oh, this is a good one. Let me think on that. Okay. We can circle back or maybe we won't even circle back. That's yeah. kind of like the natural flow of a podcast. You yeah. Just shooting the shit and talking about the things that matter. Yeah. I'm so think, no. your background, you used to be an accountant at some point, maybe I still sure are. did. Um, oh, I was an accountant for an engineering company and I was a controller. This was way back in the day. I even had my own accounting business on the side, going to school, still taking another degree. I, again, working, 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 hustle. This was pre-kids. And then I was pregnant with my first and decided to stay home. And that literally ended abruptly. I always kept the accounting. 
did the treasurer stuff for the school, I still do bookkeeping. I, I do quite a bit of bookkeeping, helping out, especially for um, yoga teachers or fitness instructors. I'm like, well, I know what both sides of the, yeah. I know the business side of that. And I know the fitness side of that. So if you guys need help with the taxes, here I am. I can do that for you. That's something uh, I'll definitely get back more into when things settle. When the kids are in school full time and such. Um, but that was a busy world for me. And it was, I found it really stressful. Yeah. Working, uh, working full time, going to school full time. But it was, um, honestly, I was 21 years old. And I had made it to a position where I would have been about 40, usually was the age range. So I was bossing everybody around yeah. at 21. And I got very little respect. So, I mean, I don't know if I had earned the respect. I look back and I think, oh, I, I graduated like this. I have 4.0, I'm so smart. Look at how high up I am. And the ego got in the way, and maybe I wasn't the best boss. Definitely don't miss that job, that's for sure. Um, I do I do like that kind of work, though, where you're doing a lot of accounting. I just really stick more with yoga. There's, I feel like I'm living my purpose, living on purpose, when I'm teaching yoga, teaching meditation. That makes sense. And I think a lot of jobs teach us so much about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, they can, like have us hit a wall it can be some tough life lessons but it always it gives you something that you can carry on into the next roles that you do no matter what they are no matter what field so what are three things that uh you're living that controller that accountant's life taught you um it's been so long honestly i'm almost 40 here so um it just taught me to live who you want to be not live for others um, I had definitely decided to be an accountant for someone else. It wasn't, it had nothing to do with my career decision. Um, I had a friend who had gone through accounting program and I, I went and registered because I felt like I could beat their grades and I was competitive back then and I'm like, well, I'll beat your grades in university. I'll beat this and get these jobs. I love numbers. I loved math. It worked out and I was like, this is awesome. I just, it was a daily like, ugh drag get up go to work go do this and now i wake up and it's like oh i get to go teach i love my job not it like i have to go to work i get to i yeah. get to go be with people that i love i get to go share my passion so definitely looking back it's one of those live your passion live and if you're not living with passion then you're not living my passion would be with kids still though i like doing the kid life, mom life. And when I can incorporate those two, it's gold. Totally. Yeah. And it just kind of goes to show like people can chase like money and all that yeah. stuff, but it doesn't really do much. Mm -hmm. Like certainly everybody needs to have a roof over their head and like food on their table and stuff like that. But beyond that, it's about like finding something that fulfills you. It makes you genuinely happy. And, Absolutely. And like yeah. So for your kids, what kind of things do you wish for them when they're like finding their passion and they're like deciding what they want to do? Like, I know they're still young, but they're probably, you're kind of figuring them out. You probably oh, yeah. have an idea of where they want to go. What, how do you foster them being the best version of who they are? To just encourage exactly what you just said, be the best version of you are. If you want to be a mermaid, you go be a mermaid. And that's your dreams. I never squash their dreams. I love to teach them to be themselves, encourage them to sing. I find that singing is something that you're giving from the heart. It's a gift. So if they're belting in the car, and my kids will do this. So if we're if they're fighting, because they're kids, there's four of them, um, we pull over and we play a song. And until we're all singing it, we don't start driving again. So just like... <laughs> Because you can't help but laugh, like, oh, my mom, she's doing this again. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's just different tools to problem solve for me. Um, but definitely, I, I teach them to, to be themselves and try new things. Um, and also not to give up. You know, sometimes you don't want to go to dance class, and it's boring. And no, we're going to go. We signed up. We've registered. You're not quitting. 
I don't want them to quit on something. They're going to try it till the end. And if they truly don't like it and they really have something else they want to be active in, then they can go for that. But you have to see through it to the end. You don't just get to quit on things. Yeah. So. Well, that kind of outlines probably one of your core values. on. The ah, way. there we go. Stay committed to things. Commit to things. Quit. Yeah, don't quit. Yeah, stay committed and commit to what you've, you've said you wanted to do. Yeah. Have followed through for sure. So think back to high school years and I ask all of my guests, okay. I don't care how old anybody is. Yeah. I want to know what kind of a like student you were, were you an academic, were you popular, were you a bit of a jock, what was uh, high school like for you? I had zero friends, I was bullied every day, um, I hated walking to school, um, I moved around a lot. And I was not going to be endemic. I had 100% average and I was so competitive. I was such a rule follower. I tried so hard. I had to be in all the sport teams. And I thought by that I would be friends with people. But I was also really little. Um, I wasn't probably the best on every team, but I definitely tried. And just, yeah, like going through. And that's also why the yoga comes in is because I wanted to help those kids that were bullied. Yep. So heavily, heavily bullied. Just made fun of people would stand in the corner and laugh to this point where in the last few years of my life i've had to assess why is it when i see people standing in a corner even a group random so i'm out of place they're talking like oh they're talking about me they're putting me down i would do that a few years ago and just go self inside and be sad about it and then with just therapy and looking in inwards i've realized oh that's where that comes from but no they're not talking about me and if they are uh, it doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change the fact I can come home and I have my four kids. And um, yeah, so I look back at high school and gosh, it was, I would not go back. There's a lot of people, oh, I loved high school. I did not like high school one bit. I, I not, not one bit. <laughs> Same with junior high. So yeah, I was glad that that was done for sure. So you weren't like, this is the best years of our life. Let's go back. Like, no, I, I was know. not that person. I no, heard. I was <laughs> like, that was not the best years of my life. The <laughs> best years of my life have been now, like with my kids and me and camping. That is like, I live in the now and I really, really focus. That's another one of my core guys, not to look back. It's actually, I teach the kids this one too. Um, if you have one step in the past and one step in the future, then you're just peeing on today. So we focus on today. We wake up, it's a new day, no matter what we're doing. Whenever that happened yesterday, um, like yesterday was a rough day for me. And then today I'm like, no, it's a new day, let's go. And that is so much easier said than done, right? Like, yeah, it's, oh, I can wake up happy. But if you really actively focus on switching your mindset, even if we're not feeling that on the inside, eventually things will start to flourish in that direction you will bring happiness. But if we're constantly focused on, oh, like I call it ER days, where you're just like kind of, oh, this day sucks, this happened. Oh, I was bullied in high school, I'm so sad. No, like, yeah, but it also made me who I am and that happened. Yeah. Now, really. you know, I could still be being bullied. I, I get picked on and stuff for things. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Like. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty protective of my kids. So if they're dealing with a bully situation, I'm in the school with a cape on for sure. Like superhero style, like you bullying my kid. You talk to your parents. Yeah. But um, yeah, I find that those things shape us, but they don't actually change us. Like I think you've always had that same person from the inside of who you were going to be. You have a purpose in life and maybe that, just was part of the purpose was people bullying me well i think it's it's important to cover that topic because there's so many people like from the outside looking in yeah people see fitness professionals and they're like, wow that person just cares so much or that person shows so much empathy or that person really knows how to connect with people what they don't know is how that person got beat to the ground yeah like in their adolescence like yeah they got made fun of Oh, or yeah. they had some crazy self-esteem problems just because of how somebody else showed up in their life. Oh, for sure. Yourself. Like I, I honestly had zero self-esteem because of all of that. Zero. And I wasn't until I was almost 30 that I actually realized I didn't have self-esteem. I didn't have boundaries. I let people talk to me. I let people walk all over me. And I thought 
this is as a mom i thought oh well, let me watch all your kids and bake you cookies and muffins and send you home with supper and and then you'll like me i would do things to make people like me because i wasn't enough um and it was such a switch my my practice yoga gave me that gift of loving who i actually am on the inside so i can teach that to my kids love you mm -hmm. you're enough don't ever let anybody switch that it doesn't matter what you're looking like on the outside what you're going through you are enough and uh i was asked someone came to my class once and this really stuck with me she said it took me about two minutes to figure out that every time every message that you say so the beginning of class i generally say a message and at the end of the class i tie it in or you, i write them on instagram like a message i'm writing that that's from my heart it took me about two minutes to figure out that you're not saying that to us you're saying that to yourself like, oh 100 percent. i write it for me i write it to myself it's a note to me i say it out loud i'm repeating it and then i say it over and over again throughout the whole week um and then it sticks and you know what it's gonna stick with someone else and it does mm -hmm. because someone else is going through the same feelings and that's where i resonate with saying messages over and over again someone's going to pick that up it's going to mean something to someone else but honestly it means so much to me too and then when they come back and they're like hey that class what you said i really it really stuck with me thank you then it's kind of this this like shift of everything that you've gone through almost blossoms like this is that was meant to be she was meant to be in that room today meant to hear that even if she didn't want to go to class or something she came she showed up she wanted to maybe even needed to hear that message and then i needed to hear maybe on a different day hey that meant something and that exact situation happened to me yesterday i was having a shit morning and a girl said hey you know what i follow you on instagram i read your messages and like i was going through a hard time and you made a difference and to me, I was like, oh, thank you for saying that. I just needed to hear that today. So she made a difference in my life. And it's something so, so and we've never even met yet, just through, and that's why social media can be really good. We had oh, never absolutely. met, never met in person. I'm like, oh, that's your Instagram. I didn't know that was who you were and never seen her face before. And it meant so much to me. Instagram has probably connected me with a lot of my closest people. Like, mm -hmm. Granted, there's friends that are close to me that I've met otherwise, but then there's a ton of people within the fitness circle that yeah. certainly I met them later, yeah. but that initial, like, who is this, was from social media. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's cool, but with setting out your messages and setting out who you are in the social media landscape, there's a big, and it's a buzzword, authenticity, but there's a big like importance to being authentic. And the question that comes up for me that I hear, and it could be directed at other people, but it's everybody wants to be inspiring. Everybody wants to like say the inspiring thing. Yeah. So when you hear that, what do you say? You know what? I've actually never heard that one, but I could see that. And I'm sure then be inspiring wake up go inspire someone if everyone wants to be inspiring man the world will be a little bit better hey but it has to come internally. from the inside and be yeah. authentic oh but do you know anyone can see from miles away when someone's not being authentic absolutely so if you're not and you're just you know maybe cutting and pasting a message and it's for likes or whatever it is people can people can see that but that doesn't even matter if you're trying to be a an inspiring person and one person's inspired do it yeah yeah do well, you. i think there there's a total difference there's kind of like saying what you think people want you to say versus saying what you need to say and saying what you need to say or what you feel like you want to say you yeah. know if you want to say something and i mean in a positive sense sometimes those you know negative little rants you're like Keyboard okay cowboys and, oh know, i've never heard that saying i like it i think that came from julina mergenovic she says it a lot that's I awesome had her on the podcast but in preparing for it i was listening to all the other podcasts she had been on yeah and in every single one of them she was like damn those keyboard cowboys oh they just get <laughs> and you get some negative comments yeah. I think one of my favorites one favorites that I got was must be nice to not have cellulite. Like I don't really know what that has to do with what I said or anything at all. I don't 
You almost don't know how to respond to that. And um, give that comment to me five years ago, I would have crumbled. And now I'm like, oh, okay, that's your opinion. Yeah. You know, so like, like, what are the tools in your toolbox that you have now that you didn't have then? Take a minute, pause, and reflect. Know that that is not about you. That's something about them. Yeah. And to take myself out of that situation. Something I was never able to do before. A uh, big thing for me is if I'm dealing with a really rough situation, I put my hands on the ground. That's my tools. Um, a lot of people don't know that. That's how I started doing the hands down. I found that putting my hands on the ground, uh, I would feel grounded. I would feel safe. And I could work on something. So, so some people will compare themselves to somebody that's so much further along in their journey or they'll be like you make that look easy like how many times has somebody probably messaged you and said you make that handstand look easy yeah and like, i get one of those probably every day to be honest with you yeah what's what's your quickest feedback for them like how, how do you articulate that to them i practice yeah yeah like, i practice or and i get a lot of like well how do you do that and i'm like uh practice my daily drills and they are all connected. So on Sundays I do sock Sunday. That is a drill that helps me with my handstands. So, you know, every day of the week I have a different drill that I try to do. Thursday, these are negatives. So today I do negatives where you're upside down and then you draw the legs down. So instead of going back up, you're working on the strength to pull down uh, slowly. On Thursdays, I'm like not excited about. Um, but that's the thing. And I'll say, you know, I work on these drills. It's, it's work. Yeah. Just like everything. It's yeah. work. Mm -hmm. Well, just like resiliency, like yes, the people that seem like they're bulletproof, they're putting in a lot of work mm -hmm. to look like they're bulletproof. Yep. And even with all that work, they're not bulletproof. They're still no. having their bad days. They're still talking oh, yeah. crap about themselves. Yeah. We have our bad days and we have our moments and you know, those negative comments, enough of them, you'll like. Re, you you rethink what you're doing you know like I've had a lot of negative comments like even I remember you know a family member being like oh you're not I remember when you were like 12 this is what you were like so how are you like this now like everyone can shift how they feel and what they want to do so be you and don't judge other people right? yeah what kind of people do you like being surrounded by um, like-minded people, um, people who have gone through shit or going through shit. Yep. Um, those are kind of my people. Yep. They, they, they get it. Life isn't roses all the time. You can make your roses, build your garden, work on your garden, but you know, it's not going to grow itself. If I don't plant that garden and I don't water my plants. Like I love my plants. If I don't water them and take care of them, they are not going to look nice. So it's the same. I like the people that are working on their gardens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That self-awareness to kind of address that you're a work in progress, no matter Absolutely. where you are in, in your life. Yeah. It's important. Um, my next question is, as a mother, what is your proudest moment that you've had to this point? Or one of many, because I'm sure oh. you've got tons of proud moments. You know, I have had so many. My kids rock. They're so good. You know, I remember coming home once and they were all sitting there holding hands, meditating, saying, saying Om Hari Om. And uh, I just couldn't have been more proud. I'm like, oh, I'm vibrating, you guys. You know? And yeah, you know, the proud moments for me are when we camp. Um, we talk about each of us get two chores, two good ones, and then, well, four chores, I guess. Two good chores, two kind of not so fun chores. When we get to the site, go, go hard. And, and we go, like this one's off getting firewood. This one's filling up the water. These two are putting up the tent. This one's putting up the canopy. This one's doing that. And it is like, phew, we look like this TV show commercial on time-lapse. And I am so damn proud. Yes, these ones. Yeah. And we're a tribe and we're a family and like, look at my squad. Oh, and you're just, my shoulders go back, my posture's up and I am so, so proud. And it's awesome when people come up 
after and we're like, we watched you set up our tent. <laughs> that was something out of this world. I'm like, oh yeah, no, it's no big deal. But really, I'm like, yeah, no, it's a big deal. We work hard at that. We communicate. And, uh, you know, actually one of my core values is you can't expect things from people. You can expect things from yourself, but you can't ex have expectations for anyone else unless you direct it. For example, I get in the shower and I tell my kids, when I get out of the shower, this following thing should be done. You can't give them like a 20 page list when they're little. They're like, I'd like for you to be dressed and your bed made. So I'm gonna go have a shower. They're laid out my expectations. Otherwise, if I get out of the shower and I didn't say anything, I'm like, oh, you didn't make your bed and you're not dressed. We have to go. Well, they didn't know that. Yeah. They had no clue. They're children. And honestly, it's the same. Like, you can't be disappointed with the actions of others when you didn't clearly define that to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I expect this when we are camping. I expect, like, let's go. Let's do this. It's going to be awesome. And then that feeling of pride in themselves where they're like, their shoulders are back. They know that they're like, I did this. We set up camp. We, did we beat our last time? And they compare it with themselves. Like, hey, did we, do we beat our last time of setting this up faster? Or all oh, that, we, bit, we did this faster and it was raining. Um, and just seeing pride in yourself from doing something for yourself with others working together. And they work together really awesome. Not to say that they're like perfect all the time. They're kids. They like Nobody's it. perfect. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter who you talk to. Oprah's not perfect. No. Perfect. Yeah. And sometimes they will, you know, we'll have moments where the one's like, I'm going to be in the hammock. I'll see you guys later. I'm not, I'm not helping build the fire today. That's going to happen. Yeah. But that's her expectations too. She'll lay it out. She's like, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to go lay. And I actually have to respect that when someone like gives directions of saying, this is how I'm feeling. This is where I need to be. You go be there then. Totally. Yeah. So with your parenting moments, what's been the toughest parenting moment? Oh, I don't even know if I want to talk about that, but you know, um, well, within the parameters of which you think would be valuable. And you can be, like, generic about it and stuff. Well, just going through the last year of things, dealing with that, that's been a tough parenting. Um, smaller example, things that, you know, maybe I want to talk about, um, would be in motivating the kids, you know, to, to want to do certain things. Yeah. yeah like... No, you, if their self-esteem's down, I, I don't get it. I'm like, oh, we've got all these tools. We have this. You guys have your toolboxes. And just some of that's kind of tough. Yeah. Well, it's like it's one thing to motivate ourselves, but then when other people are kind of relying on you, yeah. you got to motivate other people too. And yeah. It's a battle. It's Everybody's a battle. Everybody's out there trying to do it. Like. Yeah. So I guess definitely um, when I'm feeling low, When I'm feeling, if I'm feeling low, which I've had some moments in the last two years to pick myself up and be like, they still need me. I need to show up for them. That's been a, that's been definitely a totally hard parenting. Hard. Yeah. yeah. Trying to work on yourself and then working on them when they're struggling and they have their struggles. But it's yeah. going to be important because people are going to think that you never have to work on that and they're working on that. And mm -hmm. like, Why doesn't she have to work on that? And then they're going to yeah. listen to the podcast and they're like, oh, no, she's working on that. And, you know, not... I'm very honest with them too. Like, I am having a shitty day, guys. Yeah. So we need to just dial it back on respect one another. No. So, Yeah. So one of the other topics that you mentioned was setting like boundaries in your life, boundaries with people that are in your life. And what, what is your best advice for doing that? Cause it's necessary. Like whether it's people that you're close to or people that you don't want to be close to, we have to like protect our energy in a way. Oh, that's such a good question. I love that because I had zero boundaries. I was sitting there once and my psychologist said, you don't have any boundaries. And I'm like, so what's a boundary? I didn't even know. Basically, if you don't like that, don't do it. That's a boundary. Um, and for me, if it doesn't 
fill my energy, if it is draining, it's going to be a no. It's going to yeah. be a hard no. Yeah. And learning to say that and losing friends because you're saying no to doing things. Uh, at first, I would go back like 2014. Um, it was shitty. I was sad. And then I started to build on it, build on it. Now I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a hard no. Yeah. And I feel fantastic. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, whew, you know, can you do this and run to this and do that for me? And I'm like, yeah, no, it's going to be a no. And then you're sitting there with like doing something you want to be doing with people you want to do it. And you're like, okay, because if you don't say no, then you have no one else to blame but yourself. Like, who are you really mad at when you are doing this for them and you didn't want to do it? You, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. What's forcing you? And if they're not going to like you for it, okay, bye bye. And so I've gotten to a new space of shortening the friend circle and not doing things that I don't want to do. And I've, I've missed out on a lot of things in the last year just because I've been so busy and I'm with the kids all the time. Um, I'm like, yeah, no, it's just going to be no. I'd rather be at home on a Wednesday night with my kids than yeah. doing this. I think in the bigger picture, you probably have no regrets. Like I, yeah. I've lived a very similar year. Like, yeah. you got to, like, embrace the hustle. You miss out on, like, some trips. You miss out on some events yeah. and stuff like that. But, like, you're doing something that's fulfilling and that fills your cup. So, it's it's important. Yeah. Um, so, I feel like we have some people that want to maybe give a shout out on the podcast. Do you have any uh, oh. family members that want to say yeah. a few things? Colby, did you want to say hi? Hi. Let's say your name. You can talk about your broken arm. Yeah, tell us about how you broke your arm. Okay. Is there a story? I was, um, do you want the long story or the short story? The funniest part of the story. Um, there's not really a funny part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like at the hospital? How, how were um, they for you? They, they were nice and they got me in pretty quick. That's good. How many autographs do you have on your cast? Um, mm. Well, how many casts have you had, Colby? That's a good question. Three. Woo. Yeah. This is my third because I got my other one wet and it's not waterproof. Casts are not waterproof lesson <laughs> in life. Yeah. And also at the hospital, there was one little funny part. That, like, so the guy, it's not that funny, but like the guys um, that was there, <laughs> Like we asked him for Advil, and then, and then like, an hour later he came back and he was like, "You had your Advil," and then we were like, "No, we didn't have." And then I didn't have Advil yet, and he's like, "Yes, you did." And I was like, "How do you know I had Advil yet?" <laughs> so you got your cast there, and she broke her arm in Bath. Yeah, it was just by then. I was at the Bath Springs Hospital. It was good there. They were quick. Um, so I was biking. I fell off my bike. Like that was a spiking sharp turn. I don't know why. And I was going really slow, and then I fell, and then I don't know, but my thing, my arm just got like twisted or something. I Landed know. on it, funny. Yeah, and then, um, and then, and then I, um, and then I guess I broke it. That's fair. We live, we learn. It's all about uh, overcoming obstacles, right? Yeah, <laughs> and I've had. Um, my third cast was blue, and that's the one I have on right now. And then my second cast was pink, and my first cast is purple. Which one was your favorite? Um, the pink one. Nice. Except it was the dirty <laughs> All right, we're going to segue back on track with the podcast. So, right. um, what would you choose if you had to choose, pizza or donairs? Oh, pizza. I've never even had a donair in my life. You've never had Not a donair? once. Why? Well, I don't eat meat. Oh, well, that would do it. Maybe Number one. Um, and I never did that. I remember people partying in university and they would go out till 2 a.m. and they'd yeah. all have donairs. I was going to bed and I didn't go out and party. Yep. So I feel like I missed that segue of life where it was this thing that are so good that you want to eat one. I'm like, well, I've never tried one and I don't really want to now. So maybe back when I was like 20 and having fun doing that stuff and then I just went into having kids and I'm not going to go have donairs with kids. So yeah. I just don't. Pizza, we have a lot. Like we, 
make homemade pizza every day. Well, not every day. Once a week, I would say. And it's a, it's a favorite. I could eat pizza every day, though. It's delicious. Awesome. Yeah. So with not eating meat, has that been like a lifelong thing or a recent thing? Um, gosh, I haven't had... It, it, it switched. It used to be... I didn't like eating beef when I was younger. I didn't like it. And my parents ate a lot. Like they were like meat and potatoes kind of family. Bread. Um, and my mom would be very offended if you didn't eat the food that she made. And it just kind of... I couldn't... Um, actually I was pregnant with my first and making like some sort of ground beef thing and just was revolted and couldn't touch it again. That was it for beef. Then I could do, I would say fish and fins for a few years. I was always doing fish and fins or no feather and fins. That's what I was saying. Um, and it just kind of progressed to just fish and then, yeah. So probably the last like ooh, four years I haven't cooked any meat. So what's your favorite dish to cook? Uh, with the kids? Well, we make homemade pasta. Nice. That would be our favorite, family homemade pasta. Yeah, That's I always it. see, like, every so often in your Instagram story, I'm like, what are they doing? Like, they're making everything from scratch. That's yeah. crazy. I like to make everything from scratch. I find it just healthier and easier, and honestly, it's just cheaper. Oh, if I can is. make it myself, I'm going to. And I had four kids. They eat so much food. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to have to make it myself. And uh, I was born in Germany. Um, and when my mom was pregnant with me, she always wanted pasta. She ended up getting a big, huge, you know, attached to the state table pasta maker. So it's from Europe. Yes. It's an original. And I still use that to make my own pasta. So it's you know quite old now. <laughs> but it, I love how things last. You buy things now and your machine lasts about yeah. a year a, yeah. a thing is clearly almost four years 40 years old and it's lasted so. well and like you're having them involved in like the food preparation mm -hmm. process yeah and uh they're going to learn these skills for life oh yeah they'll know how to make pasta forever and they can teach their friends or whatever um and and they're more inclined to eat it totally my kids eat anything they don't have a choice i have always race them like that I did like brussels sprouts or asparagus it's either a choice so you can choose you can have the brussels sprouts or you can have the broccoli it's not like you don't get to have either of them you'll have one and then eventually they'll learn to enjoy it and i've actually just never had that where I st they struggle with my kid only eats goldfish and cheese and my i didn't have that with them that's good. So. Well, you're leading by example, making it easier for yeah. them. So that's important. So I have a question that I ask each one of my guests. Mm -hmm. And if you could give one piece of advice on how to live your life authentically to the very fullest, what would that piece of advice be? Live in happiness. If you're not happy, it's not living your life to the fullest. If you're not doing it with pure joy, there's going to be days where you're like, this, this sucks. I'm not saying that. But look at your life. Can you make it better? Yeah. Can you live a happier life? Then make your changes. Not just talk about it. We do that so much. Yeah. I'm going to do this. And I'm so guilty for that. This is my future plan. No, do it. Like that thing you were supposed to do, go do that. That's my advice. Go, go do that. In the next week, what's a big goal that you have for yourself that's going to take you out of your comfort zone but bring you more joy? Uh, booking workshops. I have been talking about them. I even made a post, like, I think in May, coming up, I'm going to do some workshops, C coming up, yeah, do some workshops. And I haven't. And they get requests for them, and I love doing them. It's where my passion's at. Why the fuck am I not doing them? So now you're this week, accountable. It's on yeah, the I sure am. <laughs> you play so, big, so I listen to the podcast when it's a workshop. When are, when are we <laughs> booking? So that's my thing. I'm going to sit down um, this next couple of days and book them in. And, and get her done. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you for joining me. It's thank been you. A good time. That was awesome. <laughs> thank you. All right.